Welcome to Spotlight, Shagun. It's absolutely fantastic to have you join us today. Thanks, Dilprita. Thanks for having me over. I'm looking forward to this interaction as well. So tell us a little more about Patari and your journey. Right. So Patari started with me trying to, you know, tinker with the idea of making something creative. It was intended to be a coffee table, but it turned out to be a wedding trousseau trunk. And from there on, Batari grew. I was uh, working with my husband. He owns a tech company. I come from a tech background, so I was helping him set that up. And once you know we stabilized things there a bit, I decided that now I need to kind of step into something else. And creative being something I wanted to always uh, explore, that's where I went. And yeah, that's how Batari's journey started. Very interesting. So. Um... What's your footprint like and, you know, who are your customers? So, uh, you know, when I started, like I said, it was about a coffee table. It became a trunk and then my mom said, why don't you make something which goes with a trousseau trunk, which is mm -hmm. a vanity case, also Hag Patari. And mm -hmm. from there, the name Patari also came because it kind of became symbolic to everything related to wedding So. Hence, from there, the product line grew organically. You know, the customers themselves started suggesting things. So we started making all kinds of wedding-related products. So it was gifting, it was wedding mm -hmm. favors, it was decor props. And yeah. so organically, over the last five years, we've just grown from making this one trunk to now having a product range of almost 100 products. And, uh, you know, it goes across the an array of uh, festivities which come in a wedding. And so you're manufacturing these or uh, you're curating them? No, so we manufacture everything in-house. Uh, mm. Everything uh, gets designed, gets manufactured here. We have our own workshop. We don't outsource a lot of work. Uh, we keep the designing completely in-house. Everything gets done by my team here itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. But, but you know, I, I, uh, my understanding would be that this is, this is an industry or a category which has got a very low barrier for entry, right? And very easy for people to replicate uh, your products. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you deal with the challenge of building a brand and then commanding a differentiated price point? Okay, so, you know, when we started uh, doing the kind of stuff that I was doing, then this is fairly recent, this is only five years back, uh, there wasn't anything as cohesive as, you know, putting everything together. So we have ended up becoming this one-stop shop where you're going to come in, so you're going to pick something up for your wedding ceremony, for the engagement, our signature mm -hmm. size tea, which you can see in the background there, the little palki. So, you know, yeah, so, it, so everything we did, the USP being that it's a customized design, we realized that brides, uh, and also, you know, everybody involved in the wedding, it's it's probably the most important thing that they'll do within their entire life. So they want it to be as special, as unique as possible. And mm. this is a very small segment of the wedding industry, but gifting becomes such a key thing because it's all about presentation and it's all about connecting as well. So we decided that, okay, we're going to customize products that hence is the USP. Everything is designed according to the brides or the family's requirements, their wedding themes. Their ceremony theme, so Mandy theme would be, I don't know, a yellow and a pink, but the wedding theme would be pistols. So we design products accordingly, and that is how we kind of maintained a niche, and we've been ahead of the competition as well. Mm. But if the same, same products get knocked off, do you find that happening to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. it happens all the time. I mean... Uh, uh, it ha it's, it's not even funny anymore, actually, the way we see it now. It's like, okay, it's happening. It's just a matter of fact thing. It has to happen. You can't let that stop you. Mm -hmm. uh, what you have to keep in mind, and we've been consistent with that, is the quality. So we don't compromise on the quality of the product. We've seen a lot of knockoffs of ours. And, you know, we've had customers who've gone, bought, and then come back to us saying that, oh, they were very badly designed or very poorly made products design and the quality of the product the finish is very very important and i think that is where people understand okay this is a patari product and this is not a cheap knockoff that you'll get i don't mm. know anywhere in the market or from somewhere else yeah mm. and it's also it's also a category where timeliness logistics delivery efficiency all of that will come into play right um and then you're personalizing it you're you're building custom uh, products 
yeah. how does how do you manage that supply chain so see uh, we because it's a custom product we talk to the brides and luckily for us most of our clients understand that everything custom made takes time to get ready so they give us that much time we take about 2 uh, to 3 weeks to work on a custom order and then things are shipped we have tied up with the international shipping partners and local shipping partners as well and we manage the complete uh, logistics of it the order gets packed in house completely you know they have trained us on how to pack the order so that pack, uh, and packages don't get damaged so we do that and then we kind of ship the order out uh, whether it is domestic whether it is international so we make sure that you know uh, we follow the journey through and through right till the end and we have not had uh, too many damages you know we have not had too many customer complaining which for us is a great thing yeah. mm. and and how have you grown your customer base where are your customers Oh, our customers are everywhere across the globe. We had customers from Tanzania to Dubai to Fiji to uh, South Africa to, of course, India and uh, and yes, where primarily the NRI Punjabi base is, uh, which is uh, the USA and the Can and Canada. So yeah, so customers have been you know from across the globe really, and because we are on Instagram, we are online. they uh, contact us we speak with them we do video calls we organize these virtual meetings we get into extensive discussions discuss the colors that's how we are able to deliver what they see on instagram that is what they get so we are very very particular about that we are not going to show you one thing and send something else and and what's your uh, split in terms of international market and domestic uh so i say that uh i would put it at a 50 50 uh, earlier on the uh, market abroad was uh, a bigger chunk uh, but now uh, as we've grown and as we have uh, become accessible to a uh, non punjabi market as well they look at the product and we customize it according to say a marwadi wedding and not only a punjabi wedding so we mm. have become accessible to a wider audience so i'd say the split is nicely balanced between what we do domestically and what we do internationally how did you how did you build that base in the international market to begin with because that's a sizable market to capture yeah so um it is and also i think um i don't want to sign it sound cliche but you know good work really does pay off and uh, good quality it never never really goes to waste like that so our products have always stood out and word of mouth really and mm-hmm. apart from that we've been very consistent on how we portray ourselves on social media so we've had that and because of that we've had people uh, getting in touch with us ordering and then we've delivered and hence they've seen okay this is a good product so they've referred people to us so over the last 5 years that's how we have organically grown through word of mouth through what we put out on social media see our products are all custom made it's not that you can walk into our studio shop and you can say that i want to pick up x and it's there we have samples we have a little bit of a stock to if somebody comes in a dire emergency and says that i want it now but people come discuss the orders and then we ship them later on so you know it, that i think is very important that you're being able to service customers like that so what's next for you what's your, how are you going to scale this right uh we recently moved into a bigger space uh, we built a great studio which we are going to uh, launch soon we are going to talk about that soon that comes next for us along with that where we sit uh, from transitioning into this small you know four five people organization into a slightly bigger setup and uh, we are looking forward to doing more custom designs we are looking forward to venturing out into crafts across the country and not just from punjab uh we're looking forward to collaboration with all sorts of people build the community that's the next thing for us um, and along with that because all of that requires scale all of that requires that very robust and very sturdy processes that mm-hmm. becomes very key for us that going forward we stabilize ourselves more we become more robust in how we build the core functioning the core engine of patel and and what are what are the challenges that you are grappling with in getting there all right <laughs> the challenges there are so many of them but they're all exciting <laughs> uh <laughs> challenges come in uh you know streamlining the processes uh mm-hmm. our production process uh, something which 
becomes the uh, backbone of how we you know function as a brand is important so the aim now is to stabilize that more to mm. connect with people where we can understand how do we make this better for us so that is a challenge that's a big challenge how do we get things better along mm. with that of course new designs because as you mentioned replication is there so you can't mm. really take things for granted so that is another challenge how do we push our own envelope to say right what do we do mm. next those are some of the key challenges and of course the challenges of scale are always there you know bigger space for us this is a five times more space so the challenges which come with managing such a space people yeah those are things that one deals with super that's wonderful and it's how did your wedding happen did did you do a, <laughs> no did you, i uh, did you use your creativity then as well <laughs> no i did not actually <laughs> i did not it was a very very simple a uh, wedding and um, uh, yeah i um, i connect more with stories of people rather than the um, uh, everything that goes around it but yeah my wedding was very very uh, simple homely maybe at some point i want to share some pictures on our instagram around it <laughs> but it was very simple. i didn't use any creativity uh, it was a very different phase of my life and it's a very very different phase and yeah <laughs> completely different Tell me, uh, in the category of lifestyle, uh, Shagun, what are the trends that you are seeing emerge, and especially around the the wedding industry? Uh, what what are the dynamics that are emerging? So, uh, what we've seen is, uh, you know, so we've gone through now three lockdowns in the last mm -hmm. uh, almost three years now. So, what's happened is, we work for us has not really slowed down. You know, weddings have got rescheduled. weddings have become smaller but the uh, section of the wedding that we cater to that people have become more uh, personalized there they want probably you know fewer number of wedding favors but they want them to be more exclusive so mm. personalization is a trend we are seeing is going to come more of course a lot gets driven by the themes and the bigger whatever the bigger designers are doing that is one thing personalization being the key that's what i identify with a lot and people like uh, craft a lot now people associate with craft a lot so okay. being able to incorporate that into our designs uh, we pick that up as a trend in, and of course becoming uh, sustainable that is another thing we want to figure out if we can work towards making a more sustainable more reusable collection uh at the very least something we'd like to move toward towards uh, in the longer future so 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 they're becoming very conscious in that way people are conscious of yes. um more authentic conversations yes. because it's a part of yes. the seat as a reflection of their own personality as well absolutely absolutely yes so it's it's very important that you understand that for the customer and mm -hmm. that you deliver what they're looking for uh mm -hmm. Wonderful, Shagun. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, Thank and you. Uh, wish you the very best. Um, so well, I I can't be a customer directly now to Patari, <laughs> but <laughs> I will I will definitely uh, you know pick some stuff from you, and uh, yeah, okay. I'd love to see your collection. Wish you the very best Thank for you so um, your retail that you're you're starting now. I think you do have a studio, right? We do have a studio. We are in Chandigarh, in Australia. Uh, place once in the middle of the industrial estate here. We set up this great space where we are showcasing all kinds of craft. Uh, soon we'll be talking about it. Next month we are going to do a launch on Instagram as well, where we talk about our studio, the ideology of it. So yeah, please do come over if you are in Chandigarh and whoever is listening. Please do give us a call, drop us a line, visit, and see what all we can do for you. absolutely and and wishing the best for uh, for the launch and for uh, you know being so passionate about bringing creativity and business together i think they go hand in hand and in your case um it's it's flourishing well so good luck and uh, all upward from here for you thank you so much nice speaking with you dilprita pleasure is mine okay.